Hi, here in this video, we will discuss about Sister Carrie. It is a novel about a young woman who moves to the big city where she starts realizing her own American dream. It has been called the greatest of all American urban novels. Let's look at the detailed summary of the novel. Sister Carrie Sister Carrie, 1900, is a novel by Theodore Dreiser, 1871-1945, about a young woman who moves to the big city where she starts realizing her own American dream. She first becomes a mistress to men that she perceives as superior, but later becomes a famous actress. It has been called the greatest of all American urban novels. Plot Summary In late 1889, dissatisfied with life in Columbia City, Wisconsin, 18-year-old Caroline Bieber, sister Carrie to her family, takes the train to Chicago to live with her older sister Minnie and Minnie's husband. On the train, Carrie meets Charles Drouet, a traveling salesman who is attracted to her because of her simple beauty and unspoiled manner. They exchange contact information. But upon discovering the steady round of toil and somber atmosphere at her sister's flat, she writes to Drouet, and discourages him from calling on her there. Carrie soon finds a job running a machine in a shoe factory and gives most of her meager salary to the Hansons for room and board. One day, after an illness costs her her job, she encounters Drouet. He persuades her to leave her doll, constricted life and move in with him. To press his case, he slips Carrie two ten-dollar bills, opening a vista of material possibilities to her. The next day, he rebuffs her feeble attempt to return the money and retain her virtue, taking her shopping at a Chicago department store and buying her a jacket and some shoes. That night, she moves in with him. Drouet installs her in a much nicer apartment. She gradually sheds her provincial mannerisms. By the time he introduces her to George Hurstwood, the manager Fitzgerald and Moyes. A respectable bar that Drouet describes as a way up, swell place. Her material appearance has improved considerably. Hurstwood. A married man with a social climbing wife a twenty-year-old son and a seventeen-year-old daughter, becomes infatuated with Carrie, and before long they start an affair, meeting secretly while Drouet is away on a business trip. One night, Drouet casually agrees to find an actress to play Laura in an amateur theatrical presentation of Augustine Daly's melodrama Under the Gaslight for his local chapter of the Elks. He encourages a hesitant Carrie to take the part. Carrie turns out to have acting talent, and her ambition is born. Initially, she falls victim to stage fright. But Drouet's encouragement between acts enables her to give a fine performance that not only rivets the audience's attention. It inflames Hurstwood's passion, and he decides to take Carrie away from Drouet. The next day, Drouet finds out about the affair. While Hurstwood's wife Julia learns that Hurstwood has been seen with another woman. Hurstwood makes advances, and when Carrie asks if he will marry her, he says yes. Later, Drouet confronts Carrie and informs her that Hurstwood is married. Then walks out on her. After a night of drinking, and despairing at his now emboldened wife's demands and Carrie's rejection letter. Hurstwood finds that the safe in Fitzgerald and Moy's offices has accidentally been left unlocked. When he inadvertently locks the safe after taking the money out, he drunkenly panics and steals the day's proceeds. More than ten thousand dollars. Under the false pretext of Drouet's sudden illness, he lures Carrie onto a train, and takes her to Canada. In Montreal, Hurstwood is found by a private investigator. He returns most of the stolen funds to avoid prosecution. Hurstwood mollifies Carrie by arranging a marriage ceremony. Though he is still married to Julia. 
and the couple move to New York City. They rent a flat, where they live as George and Carrie Wheeler. Hurstwood buys a minority interest in a saloon and, at first, is able to provide Carrie with an adequate, if not lavish, lifestyle. The couple grow distant, however, as their finances do not improve much. Carrie's dissatisfaction only increases when she makes friends with a new neighbor. Mrs. Vance, whose husband is prosperous. Through Mrs. Vance, Carrie meets Robert Ames, a bright young scholar from Indiana and her neighbor's cousin, who introduces her to the idea that great art, rather than showy materialism, is worthy of admiration. After only a few years, the saloon's landlord sells the property, and Hurstwood's business partner decides to terminate the partnership. Too proud to accept any of the limited job opportunities available to him, Hurstwood watches his savings dwindle. He urges Carrie to economize, which she finds humiliating and distasteful. As Hurstwood gradually sinks into apathy, Carrie becomes a chorus girl through her good looks. While he deteriorates further, she rises from the chorus line to small roles. Her performance as a minor, non-speaking character. A frowning Quakeress, greatly amuses the audience and makes the play a hit. She is befriended by another chorus girl, Lola Osborne, who urges Carrie to become her roommate. In a final attempt to earn money, Hurstwood becomes a scab, driving a Brooklyn streetcar during a streetcar operator's strike. His ill-fated venture lasts only two days, ending after a couple of violent encounters with the strikers. Carrie, unaware of Hurstwood's reason for quitting, leaves him. Hurstwood ultimately becomes one of the homeless of New York, taking odd jobs, falling ill with pneumonia, and finally becoming a beggar. He ultimately commits suicide in a flop house. Carrie achieves stardom, but finds that, even with fame and fortune, she is lonely and unhappy. End of the summary. Style and genre of the work. Theodore Dreiser is considered one of America's greatest naturalists, significant because he wrote at the early stages of the naturalist movement. Sister Carrie was a movement away from the emphasis on morals of the Victorian era, and focused more on realism, and the base instincts of humans. Sister Carrie went against social and moral norms of the time, as Dreiser presented his characters without judging them. Dreiser fought against censorship of Sister Carrie, brought about because Carrie engaged in affairs and other illicit sexual relationships without suffering any consequences. This flouted prevailing norms, that a character who practiced such sinful behavior must be punished in the course of the plot in order to be taught a lesson. Dreiser has often been criticized for his writing style. In 1930 Arnold Bennett said, Dreiser simply does not know how to write, never did know, never wanted to know. Other critics called his style vulgar, uneven, clumsy, awkward, and careless. His plotlines were also decried as unimaginative, critics citing his lack of education and claiming that he lacked intellectualism. However, Alfred Kazan, while criticizing Dreiser's style, pointed out that Dreiser's novels had survived and remained influential works. Michael Leiden, in defense of Dreiser, claims that his patience and powers of observation created accurate depictions of the urban world and the desires and ambitions of the people of the time. Leiden said that Dreiser's intent was to focus on the message of Sister Carrie, not on its writing style. End of the topic. Thank you. Thank you.